back, folks. Welcome to another episode of The Lightroom Show, brought to you by Kelby One Online Training. My name is Scott Kelby. My name is RC, and this is a show where we try to answer your questions on Lightroom. Now, we got this a lot on the earlier shows and on the Lightroom Killer Tips website, and the concept about talking, about preparing your files to print. We talked about if we print it ourselves, but what if you send it out to a lab? That was the question we saw again and again from you. How do I prepare my images for going to a lab? First thing you do is contact the lab and ask them if they have a custom profile. But most of the time, I think what you're going to find is your lab's going to say, send it in sRGB mode. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the mode that works best for the lab. If they tell you, that's it. If they do tell you it's sRGB, it's super, super easy fix. Go here to Lightroom's print job module. Go down here, and you're not going to send it to your printer. That's if you're printing in-house. Right. To send to a lab, you're going to send them a file. You're going to send them a JPEG file. So choose JPEG as step one. Step two is to go right down here to where it says Color Management Profile, and you're going to choose sRGB. That's the one they chose for you. Now when you hit Print to File, it saves the JPEG with the sRGB already embedded in there, Perfect. ready to go. Now, there are situations where a lab might have a custom profile, in which case you'll have to download that from their website, install that into Lightroom, and then, and actually, RC, I think you talked about how to, uh, to in the earlier show, in how to, install, earlier show, how to yeah. install profiles there. Well, for the most part, you'll see a lot of that stuff, like we use MPIX quite a bit. Right, and they use sRGB. Right, so that's good to know. Now, here's something that I wanted to show you. This was something that we were doing on the uh, viewer submission. Right, so Pooja Thwari had submitted a picture yep. for us to be able to take a look at and said, all right, well, what can you do with this? So I'm gonna just go ahead and just twirl now, this, this out of the way. This image isn't terrible. I mean, it's, no, it's pretty decent right out of the box. Not at all, right? So I just got rid of those two panels so we could see a little bit more of it. So right off the bat, I'm going to take a kind of a cue from you, which is immediately one of the first things that I would probably change is adding contrast. Yeah, right? it's a little flat looking. Right, so automatically we'll come over here and just grab that and you'll see that that changes a lot. A lot. That made a big before, difference. Before, after. Before, after. Hey, can I get you to reset that for a second? Sure. So I'll tell you one thing that you might want to try. When you have an image and it looks kind of flat, maybe not, just try it. You might be surprised. Hit the auto button. Just go ahead and hit auto and see what it does. Okay. So we'll go right over to there. auto. Right? <laughs> not a bad starting place. Fine, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, just... But that's when you look at the image, sometimes you go, well, the automated is not going to look so good. Sometimes it looks awesome. It's a good starting point. Right. And so I use it more than I would care to admit on a show about Lightroom. <laughs> but anyway, but as but see, it added, place, I mean, it brightened it a little bit. It added, added a little contrast, bit of contrast. Yeah. It dropped the blacks and made it Which a little adds bit better. more contrast. Right. So before, auto. All right. What else would you do? Not bad. From here, I would probably grab a gradient tool and I would come down here. Darken the sky. Drag a little. this down. Yeah. See, right now I have it already preset for this. I would just grab that and make that Ooh, a little la, bit la. darker, yep. right? So from there, I would take care of that. I would probably add a smidge. A smidge of clarity to bring out the texture. A smidge of clarity to bring out that texture, yeah. right? Uh, maybe a little bit of vibrance to boost the color. A tiny bit of nice. white vi vi vibrance. Uh, now, I would probably drop the highlights to see a little bit more of this and offset it by raising my whites just a tad bit more. Oh, that looks nice. So now, that pretty same subtle picture. Stuff, pretty right. subtle stuff, pretty subtle. Hey, you've got a great picture, right? You did a great job with this. All you're doing here is just taking it a little bit further. Before. Ooh, look at that. After. Yeah. Before, after. Yeah, that was worth doing. But I, I hope that for you guys watching at home, the, that oh. <laughs> it, to see, it's not a ton of stuff. It's no. not a bunch of no, high no, wire no. acrobatics and stuff. You know, I think for a lot of the pictures we take, I would say the number one thing they need is contrast. Yep. Right? You brought out a yep. little of the texture with clarity. Yep. The colors were a little flat. You boosted them. Now, yep. adding contrast boosted the colors already. So uh, that was nice. But I mean, it is very drastic. It's like, yeah. well, I would probably, maybe if there was one thing that I would do with this, is probably do a little bit more sharpening and do a little bit more noise. We could talk about that at a later point. But I think it's great. I think you've done a great job here. Now, that is if we're working with landscapes. Now we were sitting there and we we're talking about a bunch of different things and we were talking about retouching. Scott's like, I want to take a crack at one of the pictures that you have. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so He's going to let me do it. All right. All right. Look, so well, here's my picture. Okay. So one of the things that, that we got a lot of questions about was we don't know which plugins to use. Right. Like, so what we want to know what plugins you guys are using. So what we're going to do is... Uh, from here out, we're going to be showing you, not maybe every single show, but we're going to be sharing you some, sharing with you, 
<laughs> some of the plugins that we use. And this one, honestly, is really, really cool. It's called Perfectly Clear. And it is, it, it is an auto fix, all right? So it right. does auto corrections and auto things and auto retouching. And so I'm just gonna take you through really, really quick to give you an idea. It's the, and, and the idea behind it is mostly automated, mm -hmm. mostly kind of a one-click fix, but again, there's little sliders that can help you do it. All right, All right so this is a shot that RC took. Okay, help right. my shot, Scott, please. I'm, I don't know what I can do. No, this okay. is a good shot to start with. Thank We're you. We're gonna go under the photo menu to edit in, and we're gonna choose perfectly clear. Okay. All right, we're gonna open a copy. Give it a second, and it's gonna bring up the perfectly clear uh, interface is the word I'm looking for. There we go, so here is the perfectly clear. This is from a company called Athentech. Let's go to the presets. Now, so it's, and I, I said that kind of quickly, but it's from Athen Tech is the name of the company. All right, now, if you go here to Beautify, and I think this would be something you're gonna see like a lot of wedding photographers and stuff use. It's right. one click, I'm gonna zoom in a little tighter. Let's just use a slider here to zoom in. That's an unfortunate zoom, sorry. And look at just that one click on Beautify. Look what it did here. The eyes are brighter, the eyes are sharper, the blemishes and stuff have been reduced. It really did a fairly nice job all the way around, but if you want to take it another step further, you can actually go to the adjust panel. And here it kind of shows you all the things that it did. Now go down here to portrait, and you can see that it has this perfectly smooth overallness. It's got, you can control skin tone, teeth whitening, she's not smiling, so there's no doing that. Look at face slimming. Watch if you just turn on the checkbox, watch her face. <laughs> right, just slims it a little bit. All right, and you, you still have that slider. Right, if you want more, you can do it out. That's already enough, nice. thank you. Uh, there's a shine removal. So if you have a little, like she has got a little bit of hot spot here and stuff, it's not bad, honestly. But uh, if you want to turn that on, drag the slider till you see the hot spots go away. Hmm. Maybe a little bit further. And it, look at how it smoothed out those highlights. Now, down here under eyes, and you can see that it's kind of done it in little segments here. Under eyes, uh, you might go to, Oh, well, eye enhance is already turned on. You might make the eyes a little brighter, just to, I don't wanna get crazy because it looks really bad if you go too far. Right. And then there is dark circles. Dark circles, you can remove the dark circles under her eyes. Look at that. Right. Now, you don't wanna go, again, you don't, it's like anything else. You don't wanna go too far. Right. If there weren't, she has good catch lights. If they weren't, you can actually add catch lights. But look at the difference, pretty much. All right, now let's zoom out here a little bit so we can see. Yeah, and then, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty decent. But can we zoom in tight? Is there a way to sure. uh, do a little before and after? Sure. Let's take a look here and see a little bit there. Let's side by side's pretty good. Now here, so if we go do this, right? Yeah, look at the difference. Here, I'm gonna pull this out just a little bit so there we can we see go. it on the whole screen. All right, all right. Yeah, look at the difference there. That's pretty amazing, I think. So again, this won't be for everybody. This does not necessarily replace high-end retouching no, in Photoshop. But what it does do is, if you're doing a wedding and you've got six bridesmaids and you just want to fix things quick, because you're doing senior portraits and you want to be able to do those things, because one of the sliders there was for reducing um, blemishes, mm -hmm. just reducing them. So there was there's some really nice stuff there. So give that one a, 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 a try because, uh, oh, also, when you get the plug-in, there's a, uh, uh, make sure you get the Lightroom plug-in. That's right. All right. There are two of them. I'm just going to go ahead and pull up the website for you guys. If you want to see more about this product, make sure that you go to athentech.com. The program that we're talking about is perfectly clear. If you want to see some amazing results, that's the place for you to go yeah, to. Yeah, one click and you're there. All right, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we got a whole lot more, including some stuff on Lightroom Mobile. Don't go away. I have an extraordinary number of images of my children. I have them everywhere. Some are on Facebook and some are on Instagram. Some are literally stuck in a hard drive in a computer in my garage. If I lost those images, it would hurt. With Miley, I have everything archived and saved and having everything together in one place is kind of a dream. Milio is a great tool to help me better manage my most important method of communication, photography.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Lightroom Show. RC here now. We have a couple of new classes that I want to talk to you about over on the Kelby One site. Now, make sure you go to kelbyone.com. This is the place for you to get the best courses. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. The newest class that we have right now is the Lightroom Series Tethering and Mobile Workflow by Mr. Scott Kelby. Yo! <laughs> What's up? But anyway, so you talked br very briefly about how to be able to tether and how to do mobile stuff inside of Lightroom. So if you guys want to see more than just the 12 minutes, we have all of that stuff covered over on Kelby One. Now, yeah. what do you have for us on this week? All right, so uh, I want to do Lightroom Mobile, and I, okay. I have one of the coolest things. I think this is the coolest, <laughs> baddest, <laughs> most amazing Lightroom Mobile thing. So I have to put it in this context. So the first context is that Lightroom Mobile only lets you do a few things, basically the stuff that's in the, the basic panel. Right. Right, so develop module stuff, basic panel. But here's the interesting thing. It supports, of course, all the things you could do in Lightroom Desktop. Right. So if you go to Lightroom Desktop and you do some things and you send them over to Lightroom Mobile. They'll be there. They'll be there. <laughs> but here's the thing. You can actually do something in Lightroom Desktop, like, let's say, a lens correction or something. Now, there's no lens correction panel in Lightroom Mobile. There's just not one. No. But if you do lens corrections in desktop and sync that image over to Lightroom Mobile, you can copy and paste the lens correction inside of Lightroom Mobile to fix another image. <laughs> so it's if you think about this. You must show. This requires a show. You got to see it. You got to see, see it. it. All, All right. right let's first, go. let me go to Lightroom. OK, so here we are in Lightroom. And I have a fisheye image here. It's got a, a tremendous fisheye, 15 millimeter roundedness. Okay. All right. So let's go to the develop module. Let's go to lens corrections. Let's turn on our lens. And you can see, watch, it corrected the roundness of the fisheye. OK. OK. Now. now, I have synced this collection. You can see the little sinky. The sinky icon right. over here. So this collection, that image is going to go over to Lightroom Mobile. Now, Mr. Scott, can I stop you here? Yes, you may. When you take a look at this image, do you have enable profile corrections and list corrections inside of Lightroom Mobile? No, you do not. This okay. panel does not exist in Lightroom Mobile, right? Okay, just yeah. hammering that home. Right. All that exists in Lightroom Mobile basically is the basic panel. Okay. You don't have the tone curve and HSL and all this kind of stuff, right? But we just applied a lens correction. If you go over here into Lightroom Mobile, okay, and I, I put this in a folder called Fixes, you can see here is the image, and in just a second, oh, there's the correction. Okay. I did that in Lightroom Mobile, I mean in Lightroom Desktop. With something it's that synced, is not available over Right, there. and synced over here. Here's the cool thing. Now, let's pretend that I'm on the road. I'm someplace else. I'm away from my Lightroom Desktop. I can go into this image that I fixed in Lightroom Desktop, tap and hold, and choose Copy Settings. And of course, there's white balance, basic tone, tone curve, clarity. But if you scroll down, look, lens corrections. I can copy lens corrections. I can mm. copy effects, calibration, spot removal. I can copy all these things. Now, you can deselect all and just get the ones you want. But I'm just going to click OK. And it now copied the lens corrections. Right. So now I can go to a regular photograph inside of Lightroom Mobile, a photograph that has a fisheye problem. Right. Tap and hold hit paste settings, boom, I just did a lens <laughs> correction inside of Lightroom Mobile. Come on, that's really, really that is cool. Really, but because it opens up the door for having a whole bunch of stuff that yeah, you can do. Yeah, it does. So now, now, put your thinking cap on. What if you created a big collection and you named the file what the correction was? So you named one file fisheye, and you named the next file edge vignette, and you named the next file uh, like a camera calibration profile, maybe vivid, and then you name the next one HSL. You could have basically one click little copy and pastes to let you do so many things in Lightroom Mobile that aren't really in Lightroom Mobile. That's so like hacking Lightroom Mobile. It's like Ish. hacking. <laughs> yeah, like we, didn't, hacking. we didn't officially say that. <laughs> we didn't say that, but isn't that cool? That is pretty cool. I mean, that's the, so it, it opens up a whole new world. So that's what I recommend. Make a single collection, name the files, what the, the, what the fix you put on them. So imagine this, you could do, you could have one file called 25% vignette, 50% vignette, another one called 75% vignette. High just contrast, and split just, tone. I mean, split tone, 
duotones, you could make duotones, you could do whatever you want, just copy and paste that one. So don't do anything else to the photo, just apply that one thing. And then just keep them as a little library. Yeah, just keep it in a little collection called It Fixes. Huh. Now, you notice that's what mine was called, was, was Fixes. All right, well, let me just give you a quick, it's not as cool, but it's effective. <laughs> right, like, I, like he was showing me, we were talking about this before the show, and he's just like, I've got the most awesome. It and I'm awesome. like, okay, no, like, talk, talk, talk. And then he, I'm like, I like that. Oh, one. that's good. <laughs> that's good. Oh, that's, right. that's good. Here's mine. Very easy. Inside of any kind of uh, file, right, you're looking at any point. Oh, don't use the before. Use the after. Now, inside of here, if you want to quickly zoom into anything, just hit the Z key. Zoom in. Zoom out. Zoom in. Zoom, zoom out. out. That's it. That's, That's all. very simple. That's it. I just wanted to keep it short because we're almost out of time. So. All right. Website. I, website. We are, okay. So you know that uh, even though we're teaching Lightroom, uh, Lightroom is used by photographers, so we like to feature a photographer at the end of every show. Uh, I'm going to feature Rob Hammer Photography. So his website is robhammerphotography.com. Uh, he, he does all kinds of portraits, but he does a lot of things based on like athletes and action and things like that. I love his toning and I just, I love his work. His stuff is just really, really cool and he's doing some really, really slick stuff. Nice. So, yeah, if you go through and check out his work all over the place, it's just, this guy's good. Just really, really good stuff. He does some really, really commercial stuff, some really, really cool stuff. Keep Make sure you out. take a look at it, robhammerphotography.com. Absolutely. Hey, one more thing before we go. Um, for those of you who are watching uh, and you're really into Lightroom, RC and I have another show. That's right. We do have, go to kelbytv.com, and you can see all of the listing of all of the shows, but we do another show called The Grid. Yeah, it's so. a talk show. It's a photography talk show. It airs live every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time, so New York City time. And come and watch. We just talk about photography. We take your questions live in the air. It's lots of fun. All right. Anyway, but that wraps it up for this week. Hopefully we'll see you guys next week right here in the Lightroom Show. Take care, everybody. See ya.